This is Larry Jordan, the host of the Digital Production Buzz. The following interview is an excerpt from a recent program. To hear the entire program, visit digitalproductionbuzz.com. Brad Malcolm is the president and co-founder of Authentic Imaging. They're the makers of Perfectly Clear. This innovative technology provides intelligent image correction for still images. Hello, Brad. Welcome. Hi there. Thanks for having me. It is wonderful to have you on the show. Brad, how would you describe authentic imaging? So we, we are, were formed by a bunch of smart physicists, engineers, computer developers, and so that's the essence of the company when it was started. So it was to come up with innovative technologies, uh, groundbreaker technologies. And so we are doing that in photography right now. We also have technology in the medical realm, and we also have technology in the earth sciences realm. So that's from a broad picture, kind of what we're about. Invent new things, things that are different that add value. Well, why did you decide to start the company? I know you're not the founder, you're a co-founder, but what was it that spurred the, I mean, starting a company is not easy work. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it was actually brought to me from, from my uncle who had met Brian, who was our first inventor, and Brian went to Europe a long time ago to photograph stained glass windows. He came back from his vacation and they were underexposed and they were dark. So he used Photoshop to correct those images, to make them better. But that was very time consuming and that was very difficult. And he said, the average person isn't going to want to try to do this. That's how he invented the core part of Perfectly Clear. I said, hey, this is kind of cool. And that's where can the company was formed and was you know shown to me and I came in to, to help as I could be and just kind of got sucked into do more and more and <laughs> and that photography stuff was shown to somebody who said this is really cool what can you do with x-rays in the radiology world and that was really cool and then what can you do in the earth sciences realm so that was really cool as well so when you get some smart people together there's a lot that can be accomplished well, uh, well you, you bring up the uh, you bring up x-rays i mean are are you enhancing x-rays are you making them clearer are you what exactly are you doing with x-rays yeah we make them perfectly clear oh so they're not perfectly clear when we get the x-rays. You make them perfectly clear. <laughs> the, that's the name of our brand, so that's why, that's why I joke about that. So we're, the market we're active in right now is photography, but medical sciences and earth sciences are some other areas as well. The problem with x-rays is there's 4,000 shades of gray when you get an x-ray, but the human eye can only comprehend about 100 to 200. So that's why it appears kind of fuzzy, slightly fuzzy. And so we actively manage that dynamic range to bring out lots of information, pixel per pixel, so that everything is very, what do you call it in x-rays? Everything looks crisp. So your information is still accurate. You don't actually put in <laughs> things. Absolutely. It's, it's very accurate. We have a whole yeah, bunch of patents with... on, our, on our technology, and that's the essence of our patents as What's well. What's big white spot? I was just going to say they're using the spot healing yeah. brush on your exactly. x-ray. would probably be a bad idea. Yeah, photography, there's a big thing right now, you know, filters, Instagram's popular, it's all that creativity, and creativity is a good thing, but you can never do Instagram to your x-rays, that wouldn't be acceptable in the <laughs> medical realm. Brad, you mentioned your product, which is perfectly clear. Tell us what that does, and more importantly, contrast what that does with what I'm doing in Photoshop when I'm adjusting levels or tweaking curves. Sure, well, you could think of us as, as being a smart... Well, we, we are. We're intelligent image correction, and we got unique science on how we do that. Our whole value proposition is to save you time so that you don't have to do that in Photoshop. You want to spend time behind your camera, and if you're in Photoshop or Lightroom or those tools, you want to spend your time being creative, not doing mundane image correction, and that's what we do. So when your images are dark, if you have red eye, if they're noisy, when they're lacking in color vibrancy, all those things, challenges we overcome. In other words, cameras have physical limitations. They have a single aperture, which acts much different than the way the human eye works, which is constantly and dynamically dilating so that you can always manage all the incoming light. So everything you see with your eye looks great. You snap a picture in a single point in time, and that's why you have exposure issues. That's why you have noise issues. So we overcome those things. So, it's, it, so that's what we do. So we're a big time saver. Well, so a lot of the stuff we do, you can do in Photoshop. A lot of the stuff we do, you can't do in Photoshop. But we're going to get you there quicker, instantly. 
Well, there was a point on your website that I was really confused about because you were talking about the fact that when you are doing Photoshop and you are adjusting the settings or cleaning up color, you're actually damaging the image, which was surprising to me because I didn't realize that if I was doing a levels adjustment or a curves adjustment, I would be damaging the image. Is that, is that what's actually going on or are you just interpreting the images differently? Well, no, that is true, and it comes from a different shift, because remember, digital is everywhere now, but it's relatively new 15 years ago, 12 years ago. It depends when you define it when it started. So what happened when we started to take digital images is we retrofitted or companies used the same technology that we did in film and used that concept. And what that means is you add white to brighten an image. Well, when you add white to brighten an image, it becomes washed out or faded. So now you have to add in color vibrancy to bring back that, that color vibrancy. Now when you do that, the, cat, the color shifts, so it becomes oversaturated. So then you've got to brighten it again, and you kind of become in this vicious cycle. And that's what we mean by that, where we part of our technology is how we always maintain real color. We maintain the DNA integrity of your photograph. That color of blue shirt that I see, for example, should be blue or it should be purple. We're not going to shift it. We're, when you run it through other corrections, the blue skies can become washed out or colors become shift, shifted to become prettier. We don't do that. And it's very easy in advanced software tools like a Photoshop or other ones, when you adjust something or levels, you clip, i.e. you go too far. You push it past the dynamic range, the 255, 255, 255, so you lose detail in order to get information in one area. We don't do that. So that's what we mean by that. We maintain all the real color that's in your image. If someone was uh, um, a skilled Photoshop user, could they achieve the same results your software does, or is Photoshop inherently causing the problem? Well, I don't want to make it sound like we're picking on Photoshop because that's not the purpose point. So it's not that Photoshop's inherently causing the problem. It's just the way that the manual tools are designed and there's a lot of complexity in an image, so it's really easy to push something too far or in the in fixing something. Like let's say if I was, took a picture of you right now and your background's too dark, so I want to brighten up the background. Well, everything gets brightened, so and background is good, but now your face is overexposed. And because we're, we do everything at a pixel per pixel level, in 20 megapixel photo, when we do our correction, we're correcting every pixel independently, so it's as if that photo was taken by 20 million individual apertures. So to your other question as well, though, we have a wide range of corrections. So it, our noise removal, for example, Photoshop, Lightroom, other tools have noise removal, but there are several sliders to accomplish that. What we do automatically is very powerful. We don't lose details or blur like other stuff does, and it's one click. Our red eye, which is from our partner Photonation, that's fully automatic. And so you can't automatically remove red eye. Usually you've got to select an area around here. So if you're a wedding photographer, if you're a somebody that does higher volume, with us, you can batch process through thousands of images or millions of images. In fact, through our licensees, over 30 million prints every day are automatically corrected with our technology. That's automatic. And that's where the real benefit comes. If you got noise, we remove it. If you're underexposed, we fix that. Got red eye, we fix that. It, lacking color vibrancy, we fix it. We detect it and fix it. And then the latest stuff that we added is Beautify, which makes it easy to look your best. That, that's a little more on the creative side, but smoothing your skin tone, whitening your, your teeth, adding life to your eyes, making that pop, removing dark circles around your eyes. You can do that in Photoshop. That's what people do. But when we show people what we do with one click, it blows them away because they say, wow, I would mask, I would level. That would take me 10 minutes in Photoshop to do, and we do it instantly. You have the uh, same application for the iPhone and the iPad, so you can add beauty and whiten teeth and all that. Can you really do that with a finger? You can indeed. We also have that for the Android. Yeah, well, I, I'm, I'm going to download uh, for the iPad and iPhone and probably try it out tonight because you, your website makes this look all so wonderfully simple. And uh, I can sure use the help with my <laughs> photographs. <laughs> so well, that, I'm but take but again, that comes down to the value. That's, the whole, that's our whole value proposition. We're here to save your time, make it easy to look your best, make it automatic because you have better things to do. And, and just one thing for clarification is... On our iPhone, we're coming out with a major release here shortly, so that doesn't contain the next generation of Beautify like our current Android does and our current plugins does. That's coming soon, but 
you'll see four out of nine Beautify stuff. So just to uh, stay tuned. Now, you mentioned that this is a plugin. What software do you work with? It's a plugin to Photoshop and it's a plugin to Lightroom. And I was, I was just reflecting as you were listing all the different things that you did. Is any of this technology patented? Yes, we have a lot of different patents in over 15 different countries. We spend a lot of money on patent expenses. <laughs> <laughs> it, and it's, it's insane how much money actually one spends. And, but yeah, we, we do all. So, so yes, our technology is patented. And yeah, said, and not just one country, but in over 15 different countries. And there are multiple patents. Let's go back to this, this whole um, color correction, image improvement point of view. Uh, when, when I was reading your website, there is our eyes see color one way and our cameras see color a different way. Could you, without confusing Michael, could you explain this in layman's terms, how this works? Well, there's two aspects. There's color and there's light and c color. So light is color. So the... The eye is constantly adjusting to manage all the color and all the light, whereas the camera is a single point in time. And so that's a large part of the difference between the camera and the eye. There's also a lot of, uh, you know, so in real time, the eye can manage different colors. So if we have multiple light sources in a room, for example, the eye can focus in on one and realize, okay, that object is white and that object is blue. Let's look at snow, for example. Quite often you take a picture and the snow is blue. Well, it wasn't blue. So why was it? The camera has to white balance on something and it's very, it's a difficult problem and it's easy to get the colors mixed up when there's multiple light sources so it balances on something that isn't quite white and you end up with a blue image or a green image, whereas the human eye doesn't have that problem. So it comes down to just the inherent challenges in building a you know, an advanced sensor, a camera, and they do a great job. There's a lot of technology in our cameras. They're very advanced, but they're still just physical limitations compared to the human body. Did you have a lot of fun with that uh, <clears throat> internet phenom last week with the blue and black dress and the gold and white dress and everybody was seeing it in different colors? I actually, I didn't see that. Oh, been it was huge. So it blew up. It was, uh, and then every every tech website gave you the reasons why people see different colors. And, of hmm. course, none of those essays made any sense to me at all. <laughs> but people saw this dress in either gold and white or blue and black. And hmm. uh, there was reasons for it, something to do with the brain and the eye. I don't know. <laughs> it was just, it was, but anyway, it was a huge phenomenon last week. Yeah, well, and the body's an amazing machine. The way our retina sees things different, they've got the rods, you've got the cones, everything's interpreted differently. I don't want to get into all that detail because I may say something incorrectly <laughs> offhand, but yeah, I mean, the, it just is amazing the way the human eye works for that. And, and of course, it gets complicated trying to build that in a real-time mechanical device. It's interesting, just looking at Mike under and the lighting that we have in the studio. <laughs> Am I and, all red? <laughs> and no, but looking at Mike outside, you you know that he looks the same, but the color temperature of the light is so different. Mm -hmm. And your eye adjusts to that automatically, and the camera, you've got to tell it what color light it's working in. I know in. you were always very busy, but did you did you read about that? Did you get into that phenomenon mm -hmm. of the blue and the black and the gold and the white? Yeah, and It's very cool. I saw it as gold and white, and my wife really? saw it as blue and black. Yeah, blue and black, that's me. Mm. So. Okay. We'll, we'll uh, fight it out after. All right, we will. <laughs> <laughs> Brad, uh, give us some examples of how we can use the software. It, it, from what I understand, and, and I will confess I haven't run it yet, but really you just, just load the pictures into the software, click one button, and the processing is automatic. I'm not dragging sliders around. It's doing all that for me. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. We, there's a couple of things as background. We license the core technology, so we provide that engine to our licensees where largest printers around the world use us. You've probably used us if you've ever been into a Walgreens or printed through a major retailer. And so that's the licensing side, the B2B side of our business. We have a desktop software, which is Photoshop and Lightroom plugin. Yeah, you install that in Photoshop or Lightroom. It also works in Adobe Elements, and it also works in Corel. In, in their software also, PaintShop Pro. And uh, you load an image in and you open perfectly clear and it's corrected automatically. We give you eight different presets that you can choose. So you can choose any 
each one which highlights a particular issue or emphasizes a particular issue. We have a fixed arc for really dark images. We have a, a um, you know, if you want extra vibrant images, we do have a landscape one. We have our beautify one that accentuates for, for portraits because all images are slightly different. So yeah, you click it, automatic. We do have sliders for every one of our algorithms. So for those people that want to fine tune, they can do that. But again, our strength is saving you time. And then same thing in our mobile apps, Android, iOS, which includes Amazon Kindle devices. It's automatic, but if you want, there are slider bars to fine tune. And they're not the same slider bars you'd find in Photoshop. They're unique to each one of our algorithms. Mm. We so, have a, a live chat, and Dean is asking whether there's any plans to work with Apple's photo application. So what does work with mean, I guess? Um, if it's a plug-in for Photoshop, would it be a plug-in for photo? So that's a good question. So Apple had app. I, I don't. I, I don't. Don't have an answer to you. The Apple's photo is still new. Yeah, so it just came out. Or did it, it just came out? I, I believe they're still in beta, actually. Yeah. But so well, Apple no. had the program called Aperture, and they were phasing out Aperture. So it's it, whether or not we can be a plugin largely depends upon whether Apple opens up that interface so that we can build in. Adobe has a plugin interface. And so we need that to be available to plug into that architecture. So that's the technical answer. We will have a standalone version out here later this spring as well, which means anybody can use it in anything, which doesn't plug in, doesn't require any host oh, nice. programs. So you can just load images from anywhere. That will be Windows and Mac. And then you can think of it, use us for your first step, and then you can use uh, photos from Apple or whatever your other tool is for organizing, sorting, sharing, et cetera. I mess around with both Photoshop and Lightroom a lot. I don't necessarily like one over the other. Do I have to buy two separate applications for those two programs? No, no. That's So what we've done is we have a Photoshop plugin or a Lightroom plugin, or we have a bundle of both. Oh, you have a bundle. Okay. Yeah, the plugin well, that's is $149, the one I'd get. Just, just for reference. So you can spend $149 for either Photoshop or either the Lightroom or spend 199 and you get it for both. So we, we sell it per platform in that case, those two platforms. There's a lot of other companies that have their different filters and enhancements, and they have five or six different plugins. We just have one. Our producer, uh, Serena, has found an interesting use of your product with a video workflow, which is kind of cool. What she does, she tells me, is that she uses it to pull a still image from raw video then uses perfectly clear to do a quick color grade for her colors to use as a reference. Have you seen other unusual uses of the application? Well, and, and, and it's an interesting one. And, and for that workflow, like she's using a black magic camera, if I understand correctly, which is very high quality and we're talking 4K, so it's high quality. But it comes down to what a lot of people don't realize until after the fact, hey, I got a DSLR, hey, I got a high quality, I'm shooting raw. Okay, so raw, Great, you know, in theory, or practically, we are capturing all this information, but because it hasn't been processed, it's actually flatter than a JPEG is, whereas a JPEG has actually been processed, so it has some punch to it. So people get a DSLR to shoot raw to think they're going to have a better image, but then they're disappointed because, yeah. uh, okay, now i got to have complicated raw so processing software. Well, <laughs> if you use our technology, then we automatically, like we work on raw files, so we automatically analyze that and give you an image that looks great but we preserve all that detail so that's what happens there you, you have a high quality black magic video you can shoot a still in there but it's just it needs some oomph it needs some punch and so that makes a lot of sense and we do see that a lot what's the price of the program it's 149 dollars so 139 for photoshop another 139 for lightroom and then some number for both no but 149 49 yeah, so okay. 149 gets you the Lightroom plugin, or you can spend 149 to buy the Photoshop plugin, or you buy the bundle, which gets you both, and that's 199. And for people that want to learn more, where can they go on the web to learn more about the product? If you Google Perfectly Clear, which is the name of the technology, we'll come up as your top ratings. Our website is Athentech, which is our company name, a t h e n t e c h dot com. And two other things just to mention is our mobile app, 
for Android and iOS, it's two dollars and ninety nine cents. So <laughs> you could buy half a cup of coffee, or while you're waiting for your cup of coffee, you download the app because it's less than the price of a cup of coffee. Gets you amazing images. And I don't know if Serena has mentioned, but she's also won of several awards as of late, and we're featuring uh, one of her pictures. And perfectly clear has helped her win that award because it saved her life. Oh, great. And That's Brad so cool. is the president of Authentic Imaging. Brad, thanks for joining us today. I've enjoyed the visit. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Brad. Take care. Bye-bye.